more than three and a half thousand years ago, Pablo Petri was an active harbour town. It had a high street, large houses and ceremonial buildings. Two of the large buildings looking out onto the main high street are thought to be prime examples of domestic dwellings. Here, we have possibly one of the first neighbourhoods on mainland Europe. So this here is the entrance to a Bronze Age house where people would have been living about three, four thousand years ago. So what we have is a square ground floor room and we've got the entrance doorway here marked by a stone threshold. And on this there would have been built a wooden doorway, an entrance into this building. What we actually see on the site are just the foundation walls. And on top of these walls, you would have had a timber framework and then either mud brick or clay and plaster walls. Located in one of the world's most active tectonic zones, this design is thought to have made the buildings more resistant to earthquakes. Stone foundations supporting a timber frame gave added flexibility, meaning buildings could be constructed on a grand scale. Large villas were made up of seven to ten rooms surrounding a central courtyard. They had two, sometimes three floors, windows and terraces. The ground floor would have been used for storage and even keeping animals, with living areas upstairs. And on the outside, the whole building was finished with a colourful wash. Down the high street from the domestic dwellings stands a building with an entirely different function. There's so much evidence for storage here. There's so many broken pieces of storage vessels and that makes us think that this is a building of a different function to the houses elsewhere on the site. Towards the back of the building are several long, narrow rooms. At other Greek sites, these are a feature of buildings with a central storage function. But if that's true, this might be one of the most important buildings in the whole of the site. The front of the building would be where imports and exports were checked in and out. And in the long, narrow outhouses at the back, large pithos jars would have stored items ready for distribution. This building reveals a culture capable of complex administration and organized trade with strong ties to other distant settlements throughout the Mediterranean. From its earliest occupation, the people of Pavlo Petri took a very proactive view of their dead. Cut into the ridge running along the eastern edge of the city are two huge chamber tombs. Social standing in life was also reflected in death. This is the entrance passage into a central chamber. I suspect this is one of the most preeminent graves in the whole of uh, the site. And it was probably only for one or two very important people. These impressive structures were for the elite leaders or ruling families of Pavlo Petri and could be reopened to add additional bodies or conduct rituals. They date to the Mycenaean era, between 1600 and 1100 BC, and boast the best resting place overlooking the city. The high status chamber tombs, large villas, and administrative buildings 
show Pavlo Petri to be a city with a complex and multi-layered social hierarchy. A bustling harbour town that stood at the gateway to mainland Greece. We're actually seeing the dawning of the West in some way. We can begin to trace that back to sites like Pavlo Petri.